You ever notice how it's only when you finally decide to let go of something or someone that they try their best to come back into your life? It's like as soon as you decide to close the door, that's when they're frantic about trying to get in. But when the door was open the whole time and you were being a nice person and you were being accepting, they were never trying to get through the door. They were never trying to understand you. They were never trying to work with you, try with you, be with you. But as soon as you decide, you know what? This is not the type of life that I should be living. This is not the type of people that should be around me. Or this is not the type of environment that I see is conducive to the direction that I want to go in my life. As soon as you make that decision, all of a sudden, as the door closes, you have them putting their foot in the door. You have them knocking and banging like, hey, hey, remember me? Don't you find it strange that only when you decide to say no is when other people decide to say yes to you? In today's video, I just wanted to discuss and reiterate that if you're going through hell, as the saying goes, keep going through it. There's a reason you're going through it. Sometimes we're going through what we're going through, whether it be what we would consider the worst time of our lives, the most confusing time of our lives, or just being in a situation that is not conducive to what we believe our highest self should be. Sometimes we're going through these moments for so long, these turbulent times that we start to get accustomed to it. We start to adapt to whatever we're going through and we start to think that it's normal. We're going through hell and we're going through hell for such a long period of time that it starts to feel like this is normal. This is what life is. And so we become nonchalant to all the negativity around us. We become nonchalant to all of the attacks at our person and we start to almost develop an iron will. Imagine this like walking on a surface of steaming hot rocks barefooted at first you're walking you're like ah you're complaining but you need to get across it's the only way to get to where you're going you have to walk on these steaming rocks at first you were complaining but then after a while you just keep going and you start to forget how painful it is to step each step that you're stepping you're just going and eventually you know that you will get across. But in this exact same scenario, you're so close to being across to where you're not on the hot rocks anymore that a strange thought comes to mind. A thought like, maybe this is not so bad. These distant thoughts, these weird things start to pop up in your mind like, you know, I don't really mind walking on hot rocks. I mean, it's not that hot. And at the same time, you start to almost forget what it was like to not walk on hot rocks. Something in your mind is getting you used to the situation that you're, you're going through. But you're right in front of the finish line. You just take a couple more steps and you're off the hot rocks and you're at the destination that you want to be. But just at that moment, everything starts to become a question. You start to get confused. But this is just your reminder that if you're going through hell, remember to keep going through it. Not because you've been going through something for so long does it make it normal. Not because you're in a situation with people that has just seemed like you're getting the short end of the stick for such a long time that that is normal. Remember why you started the journey. Remember where you're going. Remember what motivated you in the first place to be who you are so that you can get to where you want to be. Remember who you are. Keep going. We get to the finish line of these tumultuous situations in our lives say it be with a friend and this person just kept betraying you after betraying you after betraying you and because of your empathetic or very nice and, and sympathetic ways you kept forgiving and forgiving and forgiving but you put it in your mind that I don't want to be in a situation like this and after all of the betrayals after all of the disagreements after all of the compromises you finally conjured up the guts to say you know what I'm not doing this, whether it be through sending a clear message like, look, you know, I don't think that I want to be in your company anymore, or whether it be something more subtle, like just simply ignoring the person's existence and trying to go about your way. As soon as you make that one concrete decision, it seems like that person is just going to shoot a Hail Mary, like trying to remind you like, oh, you know, we're friends. I love you. Don't you remember all the times we spent together? It's a trap. It's an illusion you start to think, you know, maybe it wasn't that bad. 
because your mind starts to make you believe that if you got this far, it couldn't have been as bad as you thought it was. And then we do this mental trick. We start to sympathize with the person that is at odds with us. We start to say, maybe that person is going through something so terrible and that's why they treated me this way. Maybe that person just doesn't understand what respect is. Maybe that person just has it confused with where I was in my life. It's my fault. And it's like we decide, okay, let me just chill on the rocks. Maybe the rocks, I can call the hot rocks that I'm standing on barefoot. Maybe I could call it home. It sounds crazy in this example, but we do this with so many things in our life. Let this be a reminder that if you're going through hell, if you're going through something that is less than pleasant, you're going through something that you have absolutely no business to be going through, keep going because there's a life at the other side of that reality. There's a truth waiting for you as soon as you cross the finish line. Right now, you've been walking on those hot rocks for so long that you forgot what life could be. You even forgot what life was because life is what it has been for such a long period of time. The other side is dark, not dark in the literal sense. It's dark in the sense that you haven't discovered it yet. It's like a part of the map on a video game that you have yet to discover. You haven't seen it yet. So it's dark because it hasn't been made available to you, but not because it's not available. If you're going through hell, keep going because what you cannot conceptualize in your mind yet does not mean that there's nothing to conceptualize. When you cross that finish line, when you get out of that situation, your life is waiting for you. To understand this, think about it this way. What is the purpose of your mind? It's a tool. So just like any tool, it has a specific purpose. And that purpose is to keep you alive and to keep you safe and to keep you functioning. So it is important to consider how your brain does that. Your brain does that through pattern recognition. If you've been through something that was painful, your brain is likely going to send you signals to, okay, don't do that anymore. If something terrified you or got your blood running, your brain is probably going to push you away from that. Also, your brain is very adaptable. Why? Because it doesn't want you to feel like things are ending and wants you to keep going. So whatever bad situation you're in, it's going to normalize it because that's gonna help you survive through it. Also, your brain only knows what it knows. So based on the patterns that it already has, it creates scenario and you eventually choose the best scenario. But consider that what it does not know, it cannot recognize. So if you've never been in a moment or if you've never experienced what actual bliss is on a consistent basis, you're going to continue to associate the possibility of that bliss with probably a pain or something that would take away from what you've already adapted to. So right now you're going through hell, you've adapted through hell, but now you're probably concerned, what if I cross the line and it's even worse than where I am right now? Your mind is thinking, what if I get to that place or that location or that state of being or in that new relationship and it's just as bad as what I'm going through? They say, stick to the devil you know. This is the devil that I know. I could deal with this one. I'm not ready for something else. That's not cowardice. That's your brain doing what your brain does, trying to protect you, trying to maintain your life. But because you know this, you have to accept that not because a possibility is unknown does it mean that it is not something that you should do or that you should be a part of. Not because you don't understand something does it mean that it's bad. Not because you've never been somewhere does it mean that where you are is the ideal place that you should be. If you're going through hell, keep going. Because let's say where you get to, let's keep it on the example with the hot rocks. Let's say you get on a land where it's not hot anymore. It's a nice sandy beach and it's completely comfortable. You could just jump in the water. Let's say by some strike of chance, you absolutely do not like where you are. You could just turn back and go to the hot rocks. Life does not end. Life continues. Life grows. Life continues to be. And just as life is always changing, growing, transforming, you should always be changing, transforming, and becoming who you are. And that comes with letting go of the old and walking into the new over and over and over again to create your cycle of life. Now, the opposite of continuing to create, the opposite of changing, becoming, transforming, developing, 
opening and spreading your wings and experiencing life. The opposite of that is being stuck in a loop. And a lot of us are stuck in loops. We're going through the same cycle over and over and over again. We're going through the same pains. We're going through the same disappointments. We're going through the same expectations. We're going through the same types of people over and over and over again. And we just won't stop because we think that that's life. But that's only life because you're choosing for life to be that way. As I said earlier about pattern recognition, your mind wants to stick to the devil that it knows. Your mind won't tell you when there's something new. It will try to recognize something old in what is new so that you can treat that situation in the same way and continue to be safe in the same world, going in a loop over and over and over again. Now, a lot of times when we're in this type of loops in our lives, we don't even realize. And this is why we decide, okay, I'm going to stay on the hot rocks. This is why we decide, you know, I'm going to make hell my home. This is why we decide, okay, these friends are not that bad. This relationship is abusive, but eh, it's, it's, it's not as bad as someone else has it. The reason that we normalize these situations is because we're stuck in a loop, but we don't understand or we haven't yet appreciated that it is just a loop. So use this moment to really think about what you're going through in your life and to ask yourself, am I going through a loop? The situations that I'm going through this year, are they similar to the situations I went through last year? The type of things that I was complaining about a while ago or years ago, is it similar to the type of things that I'm complaining about now? Am I the same person that I was years ago? Do I still have the same aspirations? And if so, how close am I to them now versus before? Did I make any progress at all? Now, when you start to ask yourself these questions, you'll start to recognize, and it's hard. I know it's hard. You know, accountability is not the easiest thing, especially when you're the only one that could save yourself. But really do this mental exercise. Ask yourself, where am I? What am I doing? And is it conducive to me being in a loop? And when you realize that you're in the loop, don't worry about it. This just means that, as the saying goes, you can't cry over spilled milk. It's water under the bridge. Life keeps going. Now that you've realized, you can make a difference. And that's the important part of this entire lesson. Make the realization that what you're going through is a loop. You're probably going through what your younger self would have considered hell. But that doesn't mean that your life stops there. You can stop right now and make the decision to be bigger, better, stronger, whatever that looks like. You know what? Don't even trust yourself with the direction that you're going to go. Just use the energy that you have right now and make sure you get out of that loop. Thank you so much for listening today and welcome back to the Uncle Prince Show. If you've made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. Please comment, I love myself. Even if you've already commented, comment again, I love myself. Sometimes we need to see it, we need to type it out, put that in the universe so that we could recognize it, even if just for a second. Because with that love can eventually come transformation into the person that you are always destined to be. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you here next time on, on the Uncle Prince, Prince Show. Show. Hello, Howell family. I wouldn't say I'm back, but I'm kind of back. <laughs> Something came over me and there was just a message that I felt that should be said today. If this message resonates with you, please like, comment, subscribe. I'm elated to be speaking to you today. I'm elated to be sharing this message with you today. It's something that really touches me, something that has affected me, and something that I know affects you or has affected you in your lifetime. Thank you so much for listening to this video or watching this video. I appreciate you, and I hope you have an amazing day. Until next time.